I ran for president in 2012 as a socialist, as a the representative of, of the Black Caucus of the Green Party. And, and the Peace and Freedom Party. And Peace and Freedom Party. And when I saw the racism of the left, I had to leave because it's a grift. Yeah. It's all a grift and it never, ever gets to the people on the ground. Yeah, I think, and that, and that's the uh, that's the difference. You have the people that are pushing this stuff, and I don't know how much of it they really believe, uh, but a lot of the people on the ground that are buying into it, they they really do believe it. Um, you know, that's something even in the the film you see some of these. You know, we go to the race to dinner, for example, or we go to a, a support group for white people sitting around like it's an AA AA meeting, <laughs> talking about their white grief or or whatever. Um, the people leading those groups are the grifters. And I think that they know what they're doing and they're doing it very intentionally and very deliberately because it, 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 it's money, it's power, it's influence for them. Yeah. But the people that are sitting around in the group, there's a little bit of virtue signaling going on, I think. But at, at their core, I think they really believe this stuff and they, they carry a lot of guilt and shame uh, and they're looking for a way to atone for it and they're turning to these grifters as, uh, as their way of, of dealing with it. Uh, it's like this misplaced the guilt that a lot of these people have. Well, and there is no organization in the whole United States uh, that would actually funnel money to help anybody that's in need of help. I mean, there's just nothing. That's all been, uh, you know, dismantled. And uh, 2008 was the biggest transfer of wealth in human history well until covid and then COVID well yes yeah. yeah but, it's but the i same mean thing. when obama got in yeah. all the money from the bottom went to the top for the first time in a revolution because it usually goes the other way or they want it to mm -hmm. but you know we're all under some heavy duty mind control from kgb and uh mk ultra and it's all through the media so i saw your movie and i thought that he is doing this because he wants to smash mind control. You are putting out a prayer that you can do something for people to step out of the tiny box they've been farmed in and do some thinking, aren't you? Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, and uh, I, I think that you know, mo most of what I do, because I have a podcast every day that I do, and I'm just like looking directly at the camera and giving my opinions about mm -hmm. things in a really direct way. I think that there's some value in that. I certainly hope there is. It's what I do every day. But um, there are a lot of people you just can't reach that way because they're not going to watch somebody like me lecturing for an hour. Um, if they, you know, if you're just like saying, well, here are my opinions, here's why I'm right. It's, uh, I think there's a large portion of the audience that just isn't going to listen. You have no chance of reaching them because they're not going to listen. I well, think that's that why you are doing the right thing by making a funny movie. Right, exactly. Because so that's you, really yeah. the way to reach people is doing something funny that, you know, just happens to be exposing a grift. Yeah. And that's something that the, the left has typically been very good at. Mm -hmm. Now, in recent years, they, they haven't been so good at it because they put the, you know, the, it's interesting in the entertainment world anyway, the left is now making kind of the mistake that, uh, you know, Christian films have made for a long time where they're putting the message before mm -hmm. the story. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing but one long homily and people just aren't that interested. Um, Excellent point. Yeah, that's but, a great point. But so, but I think it, it creates an opportunity for someone to come in and make entertainment that's actually entertaining, but also has the message. And that's one thing that, you know, uh, our director on, on this film, Man, What Is a Woman, Justin Folk, is a great director. And um, I'm lucky that I have someone like him because he's always, for both of the films, he's the one who's always reminding me that this, this is a movie, it's not a podcast. I, know, I always want to turn to the camera and start giving my... Uh, opinion but that's not what this is about We're, we actually are telling a story and the story really matters we have to put that first um were these people real that are in this movie <laughs> they're all real yeah everyone's real no actors are except you for me kidding? I, but i'm not even an actor so so yeah th those real. are real yeah they're 100 percent real and these are all real things i mean you can look these people up and and you know if you want to go to your own white grief support group you can go and uh or if you want to go to a race to dinner i think they're still doing those uh everybody at that race to dinner was white there was all white women except That's one the only woman. That's allowed. Right. Well, there Is was that, the, did they have a quota there for their race? 
consciousness raising race. Yeah, well, it has to be, it's for white women. It's, oh. it's led by Saira Rao and Regina Jackson, who are the two, the, the Indian woman and the black woman leading it. Okay. Uh, but only white women are allowed to attend. I get it, because they're the ones that have to learn something. Right. I get it. And, and they do have to, they have to be women. That's one of the reasons why I ended up having to show up as a, as a server, <laughs> because <laughs> actually I wanted to attend the dinner and sit at the table and be one of the They wouldn't people. let you. And they wouldn't. We called them up and they said that- uh, No white be, men? Yeah. Well, they said you have to be a woman. Which is interesting because it's like, well, what, what is, is a woman? woman? Right. And you should have just wore a dress. And I think we, we even asked, or our producers did, uh, well, what is, what is a tr- what about a trans woman? You know, because we thought maybe that was one way around this. Yeah. What'd and they, they said that the way of saying, they, they didn't want to say, no, it has to be a real woman. You uh-huh. know, that's what they meant. They couldn't yeah. say it. So I think they said the way of putting it was, if I remember correctly, it was like. No beards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, basically, they said, well, you, someone who's been socialized as a woman. Oh, that's wow. a good way of putting it. Uh, right. Wow. So. Let's unpack that. That's amazing. So that's yeah. every drag queen. I get, well, have they been socialized? It doesn't mean no, anything. I don't but know. You could have said you were socialized as a woman. <laughs> yeah. So I suppose. We thought about it. It would yeah. be funny because the thing is, if I'd come in and say, well, I'm a trans woman, I would not have like dressed in drag. I would have just walked in exactly <laughs> yeah. like this. Yeah. And sat down and said, I'm a woman. That would have been amazing. Say, you could have said, I'm a trans woman lesbian. And then they go, oh, <laughs> right. okay, that makes sense. I want to dress up like a man and put a beard on in drag and, and then go read the Bible to kids at school. That's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's technically drag, I guess. So, they what do you let, think I, of that idea? They probably won't let you do it. Well, I think read the Bible without the, the who needs the beard? The other well, thing they too wouldn't is that, let me unless I was dressed like a man. Yeah, that's true. See what I'm saying? Trying yeah. to be subversive all the time. Yeah. But that's part of their the thing is that they say that, that, that being a man or woman, there's no requirement. You don't have to look a certain way. So, I should be able to identify as a woman and not change a single right. thing about myself. And be accepted as such, but of course I wouldn't be. Isn't it ironic that the same time that they passed all those laws about uh, what is what is a woman, and of course it's what is it? Somebody with a bonus hole is what it says on the uh, insurance policies. Uh, that's yeah, what a woman is—a birthing person with a bonus hole. Well, bonus hole. Uh huh. That's what they say. I think that's a new one. I don't think no, I, I know that. everything about it because okay. I I have the bonus hole is the the vagina. Yeah. Well, yeah. I figured that. Yeah. Okay. I just wasn't yeah. sure. I I'm the, here to help. Yeah. I figured that's See, that, be- that's self-descriptive. <laughs> yeah. That tells you everything you need to oh, know wow. there. But it, it, it uh, is, it's, but that's like. But at the same time, they pass all those laws pro-trans. Mm-hmm. Women lost protection under the law. Yeah. As a, as a, as a protected class. So. Yeah. Well, that's what Title IX was supposed to be all about, uh, protecting women and protecting women's sports and so on. And now it's being used. The Biden administration is trying to use it to do exactly the opposite of what it was intended to do. But the Supreme Court froze him on that. Did yeah. you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's it's. They been... are crazy. They're ju- they're just trying to burn everything down. I think. Do you? Uh, when you say that, you mean like the left? The Democrats. Well, the left yeah. is the Democrats now. Yeah, I there's think... there they are one and the same. Yeah, I, I totally agree, and I, I think that you're right that uh, dismantle, they use the word dismantle, they use it as a positive, they talk about it all the time, dismantle the patriarchy, dismantle whiteness, dismantle uh, whatever, They're all, so, and that is very much what they want to do, and the, the thing is, we often on the right will say things like, uh, well, the left, they want to redefine, they want to redefine woman, they want to redefine all these terms, they want to redefine marriage, uh, but really they're not looking to redefine anything, what they want to do is remove the definition of these words, but replace it with nothing. Uh, so it's, there is no new definition of woman. Woman just doesn't mean anything anymore. It's, it's nothing. So they want to reduce everything into nothingness. So that, well, I guess the idea woman can, soon, I, they take incremental steps and soon woman will be persona non, non grata, second class citizen. And they've wanted that. You know, I think all of this is a return to feudalism and, uh, you know, that's what they want. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, you see.